some of my babies. Jay, I've been praying for you to get here ever since last year. And I can take it off my prayer wall now because uh, the Lord has honored. Honored. You've been on the prayer wall, son, since 2022. You've been on my prayer wall. I'm not one of them faking preachers. I got a real prayer closet with a real prayer wall. And what the enemy would love to do is to have us to believe that we are not. A transition over here, one of you. You. Did you put those flags back up? Okay, that's no problem. Then move to the seat next to her. Why am I doing this? If you look at any of the pictures of the disciples, they were all over each other. They were close. The natural nature is to create distance. But what God is calling calling all of us to do, if you look, certain ones have space. We naturally want our own space. God naturally wants us united, connected, so close that we can feel each other. I want y'all to go to Philippians 2. I want to talk to y'all about some stuff. God spoke some things to me. And we're, and, and we're, we're just going to read the first nine verses. So we'll grab a, a microphone right quick for me. Oh, she already got it. So she no, go to Philippians 2. And I want you to, if you don't have a hard copy of the Bible, go to BibleGateway.com. Pull it up real quickly. For those of you who haven't been in church in a while, you can be on the same page with us. Amen? Amen. Ha, ha, ha. I want y'all to listen. Uh, uh, listen, my gun suddenly got loaded. God has been dealing with me. I've been traveling for the past three weeks, a week here, a week there, a week here, living basically in the airport. And uh, I've gotten recognized two times. They don't recognize me for my preaching. They recognize me for my TikToks. Aren't you the wife coach? Blaine Sims, the wife coach. It's me. You know what's happening now? God is exposing all of us in unorthodox ways. He's not exposing us for what we used to be known for. I want y'all to catch this. He's not exposing us for what we used to be known for. What he's exposing us for now is what we are about to be known for. But we gotta connect. We we, we gotta connect. We we gotta connect. We gotta connect. We cannot continue to seek our own space because in this season, you're not gonna get what God promised you without your partner. You're not gonna get to your purpose without your buddy. Tell your neighbor this blessing is tied to a buddy, sister. This blessing is tied to a buddy. Thank you. Your buddy, your friend, your cousin, your aunt, your pastor, somebody else God, is, is who and what God's going to use to connect you to your purpose. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen the way that you think it's going to happen. You would not be connected to your fiance had it not been for somebody else pushing you to do something you didn't want to do that you were totally uncomfortable with, but the blessing was on the other side. They met at Walmart. I'm coming to the scripture, but I was in the car. Come here, I was telling her, come on, come in, go in with me. She said, Mom, you know I hate going to Walmart. I don't like shopping at Walmart. I don't want to be in it all day and then all this. And I said, you need to get out and come with me. I met your dad in Walmart. You believe in God for a husband, aren't you? Mom, of course I want to be married. Well, get your tail out and come in this Walmart. Well, I really don't want to go. I said, I believe your husband's in this Walmart. If I'm nothing else, I'm a prophet of God. Hey, prophet of God. She got out. Reluctantly, Jay. But she got out. And we went through the store, and there were quite a few attractive men in the Walmart. I'm trying to show you all something. She's sitting on the little grandma cart. Now, I had her to get cute. She's pretty. She got cute shape. I need you to walk with me. I'm the old fat one. I'm happily married. I'm walking and she riding on the little grandma car. I said, get up. I walk home, I don't feel it. So I hopped on the little granny car and we're zooming through Walmart. I was attracted to me. We weren't, we weren't. I, how you doing, sir? We in there forever. Because I know where my son is. I'm a prophet that prays by faith. 
And if God tells me, I'm just like Prophet Samuel, if God tells me that his anointed is there, it don't matter how many other ones they bring in front of me, I can't leave until I find that which God has anointed. I wrote through the whole story. We weren't there for 10 minutes. No, we was not. Right through the whole story, Jay. He said he saw us when we first came in. Oh. And he probably didn't know that was his wife. We're riding, we're riding, we're riding. Finally said, attention Walmart shoppers. <laughs> and I was like, me, me, me. The store would be closing in 15 minutes. I hadn't seen my son. I said, God, where is he? I was talking to her, but I'm praying. Because if you put it in my spirit that he's here, what does that mean? So guess what? Five minutes. Attention Walmart shoppers, your Walmart, your local Walmart will be closing in five minutes. God, where is it? The only men that were around were the ones that were rushing us to get the heck out of the store. <laughs> your Walmart is now closed. I said, well, God, I trusted you. I was obedient. I stayed here until the end. We were walking out the door. You trying to run me up and tell the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're coming out the store. And I said, Lord, I trusted you. And now we're here. We've been in the store all this time. I said it out loud. I said, we got all this food. And my husband's not even here to put this food in the car. My son's not here to put this food in this car. And he walks up behind me. He says, ma'am, I'll help you put your food in the car. There's a ram in the bush. <laughs> ma'am, Robert. He starts putting the food in the car. She's in the front. Like, mom, come on, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, something like you married? Because my mind, as a prophet, my reasoning is this must, must be that one that God has anointed. Mm -hmm. Very meek and on the soul. Man. So do you marry? Oh, no, ma'am. You got any kids? Oh, no, ma'am. for love and all the right places. No. And so I began to talk to him and I began to talk to her and I began, began to connect the dots. I'm anointed as a wife coach. So they exchanged numbers and had a cooking contest and here we are. I want you guys to know something. Your blessing is not tied to anything that you can do in this season on your own. And so if you, if you are not connected to who God says you're supposed to be connected to, the way God said it can meet you. I'm glad that you heard from God. And you joined, she joined church first day. She stepped foot in here. I spoke to her. She obeyed. She said, I know it's God. Join me. Now, I work here. It's my schedule. I work these Sundays. And when I'm not working, I'll be there. And she's under the word. I believe God's going to do it for you quickly because you understood the word of God says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger that will not follow. We could have been a bunch of mad folk. Y'all know our church is like a, it's like a little family. Everybody. <laughs> you've been a part of the family. You just hadn't joined the church. You always, you've been a part of the family. But, 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 but when you are relying on him and not your own strength, what happens is the thing that you've been believing for is now released because there's no way you can get glory for the connection. Right. God wanted to set it up so that there was no way she could ever say, well, I, child, I put my lipstick in my high heels on and he saw me and he just had to have me. That's not how that works. When God is putting something together, flesh is rarely involved on a high level. When it's ordained of God, the warfare is great, but so is the reward. So, so go to Philippians 2. I'm going to show you something. So, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one, accord, one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Continue, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I want you to stop. Hold on, hold on. Verse 4 is very key to what we're saying today and what we're about to release to you guys. Because 
If you are just focused on me, my foe, and no more, there is no way for you to be able to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish or release in the life of others. So I have to be consumed with my sister. And I have to be consumed with my brother. If you make up your mind, I'm going to join the train who are consumed with meeting the needs of others. God will then elevate you. He has to. I'm a resource. I am a resource for so many people. And it doesn't really matter, Bakari, how much I may struggle or how much I may suffer. Thousands and thousands of dollars. These things will be $20,000. Doesn't matter. The people work. They want to get paid, don't they? I am a resource. And when you understand you are a resource, you then take full responsibility for someone else's livelihood. And when you take on that, when you take on that mindset, God now is forced to release more into your hand. Because as long as I was worried about me and homeboy, God would just give me enough for me and homeboy. When I started being worried about me, homeboy, and her, God would give me enough for me, homeboy, and her. When I started worried about me, homeboy, and everybody on this front row, God started giving me enough for me, homeboy, and everybody on this front row. But when I began to be concerned about the community at large, and when I began to be concerned about the church, and when I began to be concerned about these women who are lonely, aspiring to be married, don't know, you know, how. When I begin to be concerned about the people who have no food and the people who are living in the hotels and the motels and the holiday inns, my income went from 30000 50000 100000 200000 300000 400000 I want you guys to understand something. God will put a million dollars in your hand if he can get that million dollars out of your hand. He's not going to just give you a million to, to make it rain in the strip club and about these uh, big fancy chains and to go get your BBL. But if you can apply what he says in verse 4, and when you can focus on meeting the needs of others, when you realize that you are a distribution center for the kingdom, I'm telling you, God rebuked me so strong, Kamitra. He, he rebuked me so strongly. He said, you cannot do what you want to do. I have appointed you for a time such as this for this people group. So now if you want the flow to continue, and the grow to continue, the no must continue. No to your flesh, no to your emotions, no to those things that become seed eaters, no to those things that hinder your ability to effectively distribute and disperse the resource that I've given you in the earth. I want to, let me jump right here, babe, because you're hitting a note. Because when you all become one-minded in, in, in meeting the needs of others, what begins to happen is there becomes no lack. There becomes no lack in anybody. Let me give you all an example. It's, it's in correlation to this verse. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Just write it down if you're taking notes. For those who are calling, y'all should know you should be taking notes. Acts chapter 4, 31. 31 or 32? 31 and 32. 31 and 32. Okay. And 33. I want to see that. I want y'all to see something here. Now, we just read Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, and it says, Look not on every man for his own things, but on the things of others. Right? We just read that, right? Acts chapter 4, verse 31, it says, And when they had prayed, this is all of the people who heard the message of Peter at the day of Pentecost. When they had prayed, the place was shaken together where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Look at verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Look at verse 33, and it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and grace was upon them. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man, according as he had me. So listen now. 
as you can see, when we all come on one mind and one accord, right? When we all come together of one mind and one accord, one purpose, with the purpose of helping others, what tends to, what tends to happen is we bring our resources together to the point that nobody lacks anything. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have everything you need? Do you have everything you need? Do you need a picture? Do, do you have everything you need? Because if you don't have everything you need, then who are you connected to? Who are you connected to that can staff your need? See, when we come into this place together as one body, you've got to understand that God brought us together to connect with one another so that no one has no need. Not just you, but those who are connected to you. Family members, friends, loved ones. Alina, people that you are connected to you, your children, Robert, his family, they ought to be able to say, I have no need because I'm connected to Alina, who's connected to a greater body of believers, who has access to resources to where all of their needs are being supplied. Y'all, It's a domino effect. Y'all understand that? I was watching a, a video on Facebook and they were talking about Cat Williams. And it wasn't Cat Williams who said it. It was somebody else, uh, I think it was Godfrey, the comedian Godfrey. He said, y'all know Cat Williams give out more money than most people think he does? He just don't talk about it. He just don't talk about it. Uh, rapper Lil, Lil Boosie, he said, when he got out of prison, Cat Williams came and talked to him and had fun, shook his hand and put, put $15,000 in his hand, walked off, didn't say nothing. Went to look around, Cat Williams was gone. Wow, that's a lot of money. So he said he was about to lose everything. He said, I was about to lose everything. He said, no. When, and listen now, when you start doing stuff like that for other individuals because you're connected, somebody say, I'm connected. I'm connected. Say, say it, I'm connected. I'm connected. See, you're connected to a provider. God is your source. God is your provider. And when you're connected, you can begin to connect others with him. Amen. It's more than just resources. It's more than just resources. Somebody say, how? How? Wisdom. How many of y'all need wisdom today? Hey. Come on now. How, hey. We all need wisdom. I need wisdom. I'm 49 years old and I still need wisdom. I still tap in. I'm still finding, looking for people who can give me answers. What is wisdom? For those who've been around, who, who, who's, who, who can tell me what is wisdom? Say it again. Knowledge, knowledge applied. applied. Everybody talk about knowledge is king. No. Knowledge is worthless if you don't have how to apply it. And the problem is we got a lot of know-how, but we're not applying what we know. We know the right things to do, but we're not applying those things. And then we wonder why our lives are, are the way they are. You understand? We wonder why our lives are, are turning out the way they are. Because we're not applying what we know is right to do. We're not applying what we know is the correct way of going about things. And you can't be at, you can't be mad with other people. You can try to be. How many of y'all ever been mad with somebody over a decision you made? Come on, let's tell the truth. You made the decision, but you mad with them because you're suffering the consequence of the decision that you made. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I'm messing with a girl. I'm mad at my grandmother. Messing with a girl. I'm telling y'all right now. These guys and these girls are messing up a good thing. You let them. Y'all hear what I just said? If you let them, they will mess up a good thing. I had a good thing. I ain't had to pay no rent. I had to pay no electric bill, Lena. Only bill I had to do was pay to pay half the phone bill, because I was on the phone more than they were, my grandparents were. That's the only thing they asked me to do. Work a part-time job, 
bought a car for a dollar. A dollar. They gave me a car for a dollar. You could have a car, put it in my name, one dollar. First car. Had it good. I mean, really good. Chasing after a girl. Messed it all up. And you know how grandparents do. They, they, they remind you of that one mistake. Grandparents remind you of that one mistake that you made. Because in their mind, in their mind you were stupid. You messed up a good thing. You had it good. All you had to do was just stay here. For it went free. No bills. Everything paid for. I didn't even have to pay for the insurance. The insurance was still in their name. It was my car, but the insurance was in their name. Go figure. But check this out. The minute I made the decision, I'm grown. I'm going to do my thing. I got to go find myself. That car that I had for a dollar that was working perfectly, two days later broke down. Two. Not one. Not a week. Not a month. Not a year. Two days. Broke. Couldn't start. As, as long as I was living with them, that car was working. As long as I was doing the right thing, that car was functional. But two days after making the decision, I'm going to do me. How many of y'all said that? I'm going to do me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do me. What happened? Crunk. <laughs> Couldn't start that thing for nothing. Come to find out, head gasket busted. I mean, how the head gas busted two days? Couldn't tell. My grandfather, my grandfather kept that car running smooth like a baby. But making bad decisions. And sometimes the thing that will keep us from destiny is one decision. Y'all hear what I just said? Sometimes the very thing that will keep you from destiny is one single decision. So it's very important that we understand that it is the it is the father's desire. Somebody say it's the father's desire. It's the father's <coughs> desire. It is the father's desire that we prosper. We're not prosperity preachers. We're not preaching truth. But it's his desire that you prosper. Mm -hmm. It's his desire that you be in good health. But it's all contingent on how you prosper soulishly. He said, I pray that that will prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prophets. So it's all contingent about this soul, this spirit vows. You understand? Mm -hmm. And being able to connect one with another. And sometimes we, we allow petty jealousies. We allow uh, uh, envy. We allow strife over stupid stuff to separate us. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that the person that is sitting next to you has the very thing that you need to the next level. Whatever it is that you think you need, the person sitting next to you has, has the very thing that you need. Acts chapter 4 it tells us nobody had a walk. How many of those people were just chilling next to each other every day? Think about it. I want y'all to think, think, let's think about this for a moment. All of those people, it was three, it was, the scripture said it was 5,000 people. 5,000 people moving about every day. A lot of them knew each other. Moving about every day. Lacking something. Not realizing that the person that they had just got through talking to had exactly what they needed. And what it did was took what it took was a few people to bring everybody together with one mind and one accord. If y'all could just get together with one mind and one accord, you realize, man, she had something that I needed the whole time. She had something that I needed the whole time. And I've been talking to this girl for months. And everything that I needed was already in her hand. 
But we're so busy, got, got the blinders on. Want to only deal with what's in front of us that we're missing everything that we need. Everything. Somebody say everything. Everything. So, question is, what is it that you need? And who are you connected to? There's always one. <laughs> Who are you connected to to supply that need? My mom and dad. <laughs> Have you built that relationship? Listen now. See, see, sometimes, listen, sometimes to get what you need is requires you to build a relationship. Right. Wow. Come out of your comfort zone and build a relationship. That's why you don't have what you need. You won't come out of your comfort zone. You comfortable with doing you. You comfortable with I like being by myself. I, I hear women say this. I don't do well with other girls and do with other women. Why not? I can't have female friends. I, I've heard women say that. I, I can't I can't have people. Why not? I can't have male friends. I've heard fellas say that too. I, I, I don't do well with other guys. Why not? What is in you that is causing you not to be able to fellowship with another guy or with another woman? Why not? And the very thing you could need that's going to open the door to your destiny could be in that woman or be in that guy. But you're so full of yourself that you're missing out on the blessing that is shown. The Bible says we have these gifts in earthen vessels. We have these treasures in earthen vessels. This is an earthen vessel. So there's a gift on the inside of you, Jay, that I got I, I got to connect with you to get that gift. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is that's in you, we need Come on now. Whatever's in you, we need. Right? We need. You have experiences, talents, resources that we need. I need as an individual. So why is it that you can't connect with other people? You're the only common denominator. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Hello? Que pasa? You're the only common denominator. If you cannot build relationships with other individuals, or it seems like you're always at war with other individuals, it seems like something always popping off, you need to look inwardly and say, what is it about me that is preventing me from connecting with others who have the very thing that I may need to walk into my destiny. My God. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand that? Yeah. Are you stubborn? Yeah. <laughs> so, I just <laughs> I, uh, come on now. Uh, you got to ask it. Am I stubborn? Am, am, am I hard headed? Yeah. <laughs> am I making it? Am I full of excuses? See, that's something that we don't want to embrace. We, we are so full. Some of us are just full of excuses. We try to find reasons not to do something instead of trying to find a reason to do something. Full of excuses. And uh, we we wonder why we suffer what we suffer. We find an excuse for it. We wonder why we lack what we lack. We find an excuse for not doing it. We find, we find all kinds of excuses. And because we find those excuses, 
We can't fully walk into those things. We find an excuse not to connect with one another. We like, like him. You just met him. Something about him. I mean, you just met the dude 10 seconds. How, how can you make it a judgment call, a permanent judgment call on a 10 second meeting? Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? And this person might be the CEO of a Fortune 100 company. Got your job waiting for you, but because you, I don't like him, he could be the very thing, or she could be the very thing. She act like she, she all that. She could be the very thing that could give you the dream job that you've been looking for. But because you don't, you, you don't like him, I don't connect well with other women. Me and other dudes, me and other guys seem to rub blood hands. We, we, we make up all, y'all see what I'm saying? And then we can't connect. We come to church, we got our clicks, and we can't connect. We got the people we like to hang with, but we can't connect. I got to be close to the pastor. Why you got to be close to the pastor? I'm only limited. She's only limited. Y'all hear what I just said? I am limited. She is limited. We are You shouldn't be trying to just connect with us. You should be trying to connect with everybody in this building. Some of y'all need jobs that don't require you to leave your home. You need to connect. Some of, some of y'all want to start a restaurant, but you don't know how to cook. You need to connect with those individuals that cook. Listen now, listen, I mean, let me help you. Let me help you. Some people are good at administration, but sorry at cooking. And some people are sorry at administration, but great cooks can cook the house down, feed the 5,000, but still have room left to feed 5,000 more. But because whatever excuse you have on not connecting with that individual, you hinder yourself. You hinder your ability to, uh, you hinder your ability to be able to bring to pass those very things that you desire to do. Because you don't want to connect with an individual who has your resource. This is that season. Somebody say, this is that season. This is that season. This is that season that you got to come out of your box. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If you connected in this ministry, I need y'all to come out of your box. Come out of your box. Come out of your zone. And connect with this ministry. Because see, when you connect with this ministry, you connect with the vision of this ministry, what happens is we begin to grow and we begin to bring in other individuals, right? We begin to bring in other individuals that have resources, that have access. You understand what I'm saying? Tag. I want to, I want you guys to get this. I, I left off before I had that to deal with that situation. I left off saying to you guys that your blessing is tied directly to the efforts, the connections, the, the leading, if you will, the influence, if you will, of somebody else that you are connected to. Because the body is supposed to distribute and strengthen, distribute resource to and provide strength 
for the body. The Bible says be good to all men, but especially to them who are of the household of faith. And what you find out is a lot of people out here in the world don't really have a family connection, a body of people to support them, to pour into them, to strengthen them, to have their back. That's why my house is always full on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and Christmas. It won't be this Christmas. I promise I'm not cooking this time. But 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 don't don't no, no, close your mouth, y'all. All y'all cook. Y'all come to the house. You really read this video. Pot luck. Pot luck. This Christmas is pot luck. Pot luck, guys. You understand? I'm not going to. I'm sorry. So, I'm luck and put it in a pot. You're going to white luck and put it. All y'all are spoiled. I realize that. Y'all are really, really spoiled. Y'all think I'm, I'm, they think I'm their personal maid. It's B Y O F. Can you make all the greens? Can you make cornbread dressing? Oh, look at the ear. It's only twice a year. Y'all heard that phrase, these nuts? Twice a year, these nuts. Yeah. You understand me? Uh, excuse me, Lord. Uh, no, Jesus, I've been through it. I don't tell people about these nuts anymore. So I take that back. After it lands in your spirit that I'm not cooking for y'all this year for Christmas. Now, as the woman of God attempted to say, Y'all need to cook for us. Yeah. Y'all, we can't move past it. Everybody, look. I should have never. He's a. Y'all are, listen, Jay just came and y'all are contaminating him. He told me, hey, I'll put some money in on some crap. No, 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 Jay, no, no, don't, don't, don't be like that. We already my baby, you the good one. Don't, don't, don't. No, no, we not doing that. We not, we not, we not, we not. Listen, if you can't come over there with crabs because you're going to bring, you're going to be able to smoke the whole tree. My house, they don't think the preacher is over there getting blazed over there. No, no, Jay, no, no, just no, just no, no. Your crabs going to be through window. You understand me? You have to stay in your car and get your crap. So I said, call you blazing brother Jay. You understand what I'm talking about? That's his nickname. When he finally has his call to preach, he's going to be the blazing pastor. You understand what I'm talking about? Listen to what I'm saying. But Bud blazing pastor. You understand what I'm talking about? Y'all think it's the fire of the Holy Ghost. No, it's the fire of that endo. So watch this. <laughs> so, 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 so watch this. When, when we are connected, you know what? <laughs> That's why y'all see why he fits in the family. When, when you are connected, here's what's supposed to happen. What's supposed to happen is he's hungry. She has food. She feeds him from what she has, which means she may not have enough left for herself. But she trusts God to supply all her need, Philippians 4.19, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And because she's faithful and she distributed the resource that he gave her to who he told her to give it to, God now places a seed in her hand that's going to meet her need. And because they are connected, she's praying, she heard from God. Sister God called, God woke me up this morning and told me to bless you with this $5,000, 3000 I had people give me $10,000, $2,000. The Lord told me to bless you. It'd be right on time, too. You know, your butt muscles be tight and stuff be doing. You don't know where it's going to come from. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust you. And he, he, you know, he can use a white man, Vietnamese, Chinese, Asian, but he uses a nigglet. And the nigglet calls and says, look at here. The Lord told me to bless you. You understand what I'm saying? He sure did. You know, and so when you understand that the, 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 the law of reciprocity and the principle of sowing and reaping, you want to get as much seed in the ground as you possibly can. Now, we don't do all these offerings and all that stuff. Y'all know I'm believing that. I've seen too many pimps in the pulpit pimping the people for money. We work the statements. I sell nachos just like you do. I get on the cash register just like you do. I'm going to sit in the back for a long time to manage the rest. But when it gets a rush, I'm going to get up and get on that register and I'm going to hustle. And I'm going to get them tips and I'm going to get them lines down. Why? Because it's meeting the needs. We don't live above our means. We could be in a much bigger, fancier building, but why? It's 30 niggas and one white man in this place. It makes no sense. Right? So what am I saying? Don't live above your means and expect the people that God ordained to bless you to maintain an unrealistic standard. Don't miss that thing. That thing just went right on over your head. God has people stationed to bless you because he has you stationed to be a blessing to somebody else. And it only gets activated when you do what you're stationed to do. And what, what, what brings it to a screeching halt is God told him to bless you with a Toyota. Y'all saw the little girl on, on, on TikTok and Facebook and she was graduating and her mama bought her a Tesla. 
Somebody come back to Lynn and say, with 10 boxes of shoes that they had just bought. The Lord told me to give you this. Or they'll bump into me at the shoe store and buy me five or six pairs of shoes. The Lord told me to bless you, woman of God. Get whatever you want in this store, and I'm going to pay for it. But it's deep. But notice this now. It wasn't just, most of the time, it wasn't strangers. It was people she was already connected with. It was people she already knew. Hey, let me, let me, because I want to go on in there. My husband, when we first, our first house that we got together on 8th Street, um, it was three bedrooms. And, and um, you know, uh, I, I got some stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to say I got some clothes and shoes, Jake. That's all I'm going to say, right? And so I needed something bigger than that little bitty baby closet that they give you in a house. No closet is big enough. For a queen. A queen needs a palace sized closet. So my husband decides to turn the third bedroom into a dressing room, i.e., an additional closet. Mm -hmm. For me. He he did mirrors, he did drapes. It was beautiful. He did it for me. And I was in there thanking God, God, I thank you for it. He's so beautiful. He made me shoe shelves and clothes racks all around the walls and my little wig stands and my makeup area. And I had a whole beauty station like you go into the hair salon. And man, it was beautiful. I said, oh, this is beautiful. Thank you, Lord. And he said, you thought I had him to do this for you, but I had him to do this for my daughters. Now go get them. So what I started doing was going to the whole store because we live, you know, so I'll go up there where the hookers be. And I would pick them up. And you know what, Kamitra? God would bless me. Because some of them would let me cook for them. They hadn't had sleep in three, four days. Hadn't had a bath. And they trusted me. I said, come to my house. Let me feed you. Take a bath. Sleep. sleep. Sometimes they sleep for two or three days. They wake up. I pick them up on Tuesday. They wake up on Friday. That's how long they've been on the streets. Someone tell me, I had had a bath in two years. Washing out, washing in the bath. In the, yeah, they were doing wash-offs in, in the bathroom sink. Y'all don't act like that. It's a part of the family. Yeah, it's called a whole bath. 
And so, so, so they didn't have food. They didn't have clothes. They didn't have anybody care for them. And I had, you know, two dining rooms had a little nice small one there that was right by the kitchen. And so I, you know, I, <laughs> I took out the dining room table and put a two person pub table there. Two chairs. I don't want him there. I don't want my kids there. I don't want anybody there but she and I. So that I could minister strength to her because it used to be me. I never walked the street when I was hoeing, but I was a hoe nonetheless. And I didn't have anybody who respected me enough, cared for me enough, viewed me as something valuable. And I told my husband, I said, I want to turn this into a shopping experience for them. I don't want just my clothes in my size. I don't want just my shoes in my size. And I began to go to the shoe store and buy every cute shoe that I will wear in every size. So if she was a size 6, although I wear a size 10, her size was in my closet. And if she was a size 8, her size was in my closet. And I bought underwear. And I bought bras. And I learned how to do my own makeup because I'm not good with makeup. Because I, I want them to feel beautiful. And I would buy wigs. And I would buy weave. And I would sit, and sometimes I would braid some of their hair. And sometimes I would crochet their hair. Sometimes I would just give them a wig. But my point was, I was speaking to their purpose. I don't know how I ended up over here, but I'm going to go on all the way in. I remember one girl, Shantia. Shantia. Shantia was like 22. Holy. I came out of church. I, I keep trip money. If you put on my wallet right now. It's some ones, some fives, some tens. I keep trick money. I am a professional trick because I pay them and they think it's for a sexual favor. And once they get in my car, it's for an opportunity, an undistracted opportunity for me to witness Christ and speak to their purpose. So I got Shanti, I pulled up, I said, how much? She said, what you want? I said, what you do? She said, I do everything. I said, I got you, get in. She said, uh-uh, you're gonna have to give me $25. I said, I got you. She said, show me the money. I said, I got you. She get in the car, I start witnessing. I said, now this $25, what I want you to do, I want you to come. We have Bible study. It lasts for one hour and 30 minutes. And I'll give you the $25. That's it? That's all I got to do? I said, that's all you got to do. Bet. She gets in the car. She comes. She comes to Bible study. She ain't even seen no word. Nothing. Soon as Carlos said amen or whatever he said, later I need my money. <laughs> I gave her the money. I said, where are you going? I walk. I said, I'll take you. I started telling her how God loves her. And I started witnessing to her, ministering to her. She didn't have anywhere to go. $25 wasn't enough to get her motel. And y'all know what I say to every hoe. If you're going to be a hoe, don't be a dumb hoe and don't be a broke hoe. When I was a hoe, I was a paid hoe. I'm not glorifying it. I'm simply saying, why would you be tricking if all you can get is $25? And that's not going to help you accomplish your goal. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. So now watch this. What's happening? Hear me. What ends up happening is I minister to her. She comes to my house. house three days. She comes to my house. I, she let me cook for her. She took a bath, she slept, she stayed there for three days eating. And you know, she got the itch, but was ready to go back out. And I said to her, come back. I don't care what people think. And you don't have to respect my house at 12 and 1. If it's 3 in the morning and you feel ready, you want to eat, you want to sleep, you want to take a bath, come here. I do not want you risking your life for something stupid. She says, okay, she didn't come. I'm praying out for her. At that time, I didn't have a prayer wall. I had a prayer room. I, I mean, a, a, I mean, a, 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 it was like a prayer corner in my room. It wasn't, I got a whole closet now, but it, it, it was just a little section. I put her on there. Because after two weeks went by and I didn't see her, I'm riding every day. I'm the chick that will get up every day and come to your house. Every day. She showed you're going to be delivered. I don't play with them. Even after you tell her to leave you alone. You know why? Because it's hard for people. When you you rough around the edges like me, and you don't, you don't, you know, I'm not the, the typical pastor. You know, you think first lady, I don't have a big polyester hat. I don't, blessings on your daughter. God bless you. Praise the Lord. That's not me. 
So everybody can't handle that. This folk want a picture perfect situation. And the truth is, the picture perfect is rarely as perfect as the picture appears, but that's for another day. So anyway, I run into her again. This time she does the all the new clothes I put on her. The wig is leaning to the side. Like it's been sitting there about three times. Yeah, man. She dusted, crushed the shoes, leaning, everything. I'm like, she probably ain't bathed in, in the whole three weeks. Because she got on the same outfit. Clothes stained, everything. And, you know, I said, get in the car. She said, no, uh, you know, I'm not fresh and I don't want to stink up your car. I said, girl, it's a car. Get in. I didn't care. I didn't put no plastic down in my little bins. I didn't do any of that. Get in. Get in. I care about you. So she gets in. I bring her back to the house. She eating, sleeping, laying up more days. This time, I wake up and she gone. But I have been praying with her. I have been sharing with her, speaking to her purpose, telling her because her kids, that they had taken her kids. She had a criminal record. She had a lot of, you know, stuff going on. She felt like her mom hated her. And I was telling her, you know, you are who God said you are. And I took her to Proverbs 31. Long story short, I did not see Shantia for months. Three, four, maybe seven months. Six, seven months. There was this Burger King across the street from our church. We had left. And I said, I'm hungry, but I don't want to go sit down and eat. Let's just grab something from Burger King. So we pulled up. I have a unique voice. So my sheep hear my voice, and they know, oh, that's my pastor. So when I pulled in the drive through and I'm ordering my food, she takes the order, but you can tell, I don't recognize her voice, but you can tell, you know, she's like, this sounds like Lynn. So he and I, you know, they take your order, and then you pull up to the window to pay. We... We pulled up to pay, and she's working the drive through My baby Jay thought she snatched off that head and said, I know it was you. I know it was you. And she ran out the building, bro. It was a whole lot of car. And she snatched my car door open, and she hugged me up, and she kissed me. She said, you saved my life. You saved my life. I've been looking for you. I couldn't even remember your address. I was so high when I was coming to your house. She said, I've been looking for you. I've been asking everybody about you. Nobody can tell me. She said, you got to know the good news. I've been clean for five months. I got my job. I got my apartment. I got my kids back. She said, you saved my life. I'm tell y'all something. I can't make y'all be like me. Because I'm a little rough around the edges. But if you just become fixated on saving people group, I don't even try to reach certain people. I'm not anointed for everybody. But I've been touched with the infirmity of hoarders. I've been touched with the infirmity of being a black sheep. I've been touched with the infirmity of having a strained relationship with my mom and with my family. I've been touched with those infirmities. So those type of people may supernaturally connect with me on some level. They draw. God sends them to me. No matter where they are, what they got going on, God sends them to me. I've been touched with the infirmity of wanting to get stuff done and a man ain't ready. Okay, good, good day. Just like the shoes. Okay, this hurt my coin. This rubbing too tight. Bye. Deuces. Just covenant breaking. Couldn't stay anywhere long. Couldn't submit to authority. Got a rah, rah, rah in my spirit. You can't tell me nothing. That's what I've been touched with. What have you been touched with? Who are you assigned to rescue? Because when you become consumed with meeting the needs and saving others, God will save you. You and he will free you. Uh, uh, listen, I, I understand that a lot of us come here for us. Can we be? Can we? Can we agree? All of us come here to church for us, but we have to kind of flip that on its head a little bit where we start coming in for others and saying, Lord, use me to be a blessing to somebody today in the house of God. That needs to be our daily prayer. Use me to be a blessing to somebody today. 
even if it's survival for a chicken cell. Use me to be a blessing for someone else. You never know what that chicken sandwich would result in. You never know what that dollar could result in for that individual. You also never know what your act of kindness can do for them. I, I was praying for you probably, I don't know, maybe three or four days ago. I was, I was a whole other state. And working in the jails, it's not an easy job. I said, God, why you got this baby here? I don't, you know, I don't want you in the jail. And God, she works in the jail. She deals directly with the inmates. And God revealed to me that he has you there as a buffer for them. Because some of them are being raped by guards. Some of them are being abused and mishandled and manhandled by guards. Some of their needs are being neglected. You are there as a ministry agent for them. And Bakari, you God's looking you. The work that he's called you to do requires you to be in an entirely different environment. You have a condition, God spoke to me. You are accustomed to going with the flow because you don't like to make waves. You're about to make waves. The moment you connect, you're going to start making waves. You know why? You are a disruptor. You were created to disrupt demonic systems. There's such a peaceful nature of that rests on you. That's why you keep attracting these rah, rah, rah dudes in the raggedy. That's why you keep attracting them. It's because of what you're anointed for, right? That's what you're anointed for. I ain't mean to put you out there, but, but we out here now. We, we out here to get right? The swim little fish. I need you to begin to move in your purpose because the more you move in your purpose, the more you will magnetically attract that which is assigned to your purpose. But if you just go with somebody else's current, you're sort of swept downstream to a place that you were never supposed to be. And then you got to do all of this to swim back upstream to get to your people. Your purpose. I'm going to leave you alone because I don't want to go all the way in. But there is, there, is, there is a wholeness that's coming to you when you choose to obey. And you don't have to put on airs and, and try to, to, to fit in. God told me your quietness and your shyness is a disguise and a mask. Because you really don't like attention. You know, some people secretly like attention. They pretend like they do. You really don't want it. You really like, don't come over here. Like, it's okay. Just, all right, can, can we do this privately? I, I don't want, oh, lady. <laughs> right? I love you, so I'm going to leave you alone. But I want you, to, I want you to understand that in this house, everybody is free to be themselves. And we don't fake deliverance. If you're not delivered, it's okay. Because we're all working towards it. Does that make sense? Nobody's going to judge anybody. And we laugh at each other. You know why? Ain't nobody on the outside gonna laugh at you. We'll play no games. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, whatever I'm going through, I'm going through. You can laugh because you know, because you bring one. You gonna hold my hand. If I get pregnant, I'm wet. Like, you gonna pull my hair back while I'm vomiting, and you gonna buy me some diapers anyway, and still do a baby shower. You're not gonna judge me and throw me under the bus. You're gonna love me anyway, and my best baby. That's what family does. <laughs> no, Jojo, I'm sorry. I got to be, be more responsible with my word. <laughs> but that's the baby. No, that's not a good thing, son. No, grandson. No, no, no. That's not a good thing. Why, why am I saying these things to you guys? Some of you are facing battles that you've been dealing with for years and had to change. Repeating cycles. You don't know why. Because you cannot unlock you from that place. You have to connect with the key to unlock you. That key may be me, that key may be your mama, that key may be your cousin, that key may be your daddy. But you need people around you. You need a support system. And you need one that's not going to squeeze the life out of you. But you need one that's going to breathe life into you. <laughs> I know, right? 
she's my partner. She's gonna give me to my guests. <laughs> Y'all got it. So now, Jay, why do you think God sent you here? <laughs> <laughs> I abuse him so bad I always beat him up every time I see him who, who gonna go to the pastor church that's always beating you up every time they see you I beat him every time I hit him every time he be like what now? I see <laughs> you like pain I see I see <laughs> yeah. y'all healed him up oh they healed you up <laughs> Come church, you gonna join the church. You tired of you part of the family. You've been bootlegging for a whole year. Go on and let's get married. I mean, come on, we're doing these drive-bys and these uh, uh chill, Netflix and chill. No, 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 ain't gonna be no booty calls tonight. You finna marry or, or you finna carry your booty cheeks on somewhere else. But watch this. I want you guys to close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. And I want you to envision three people. And these three people are people who know you know need you. They may not respect you. They may not view you as their answer. They may not think you are valuable. But you know they need you. They either need your love, your support, your discipline, your resources, your prayer. They, they need something from you. Your protection, your cover. They need something from you. And it doesn't matter if they're not listening. And it doesn't matter if they're irrational. And it doesn't matter if they're rebellious. And it doesn't matter if they're difficult. Just keep your mind fixed on these three people. Now repeat after me. Say, Lord, Lord use me use to be the resource and the answer for these three people. And Lord, let it be contagious. Let them become a resource and an answer for three people. And Lord, let it be perpetual so there will be a constant multiplication of being resources and answers for each other. I repent for my selfish ways. Please forgive me for being inconsistent in my relationship with you. Now, God, Strengthen me for a fresh start. I want to walk towards you and I don't want to stop. Move every stumbling block, move every hindrance, move every delay. Lord, I surrender in Jesus' name. That is the end of my sermon. I'm not going to splash oil on y'all, I'm not going to prophesy to y'all. I'm not going to come up here and push y'all down. <laughs> but here's what I am going to do. I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> it's giving you pain.